This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 127, Empty Thoughts. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Well, hello there. Welcome on in wherever you are and whatever you're up to today. So glad to be here with you. How are you? How's your week going? I absolutely love hearing from you and getting the chance to connect with you directly. So please come find me on Instagram. So many of you have. I'm at McCormick. So many of you are sending me DMs over there, giving me great show ideas letting me know how the podcast is landing for you and what's coming up. You can find me on my website too and just send me a message that way. You can always rate and review the show. So if you're listening, um, I guess via Apple Podcasts, you can rate and review the show. It's just wonderful to hear from you. No matter what your love language is, no matter what outlet you pick to reach out to me, some really, really fun things coming up for all of us this fall. And I'm going to be sharing more as I get some of these dates solidified and have all the registration stuff finalized so that you can get signed up. But just to give you a sneak peek, I'm going to be opening the doors to the Transforming Anxiety Collective here soon. I only open the doors to the collective twice a year. The next cohort of that small group coaching program will start in September. So I'm really looking forward to welcoming the next group in for that. We're going to keep it super small. I have just found that the boutiquier and sweeter and cozier it is, the better it is for, for everybody that's in there. So more on that soon. Also, a lot of you have been asking about meditation. I know that in the world of anxiety, <laughs> you've probably been you know, more than once, people have probably recommended or suggested that you try meditation. And you may know if you've been hanging out here for a while that I'm in a two-year meditation teacher training program. I've been studying under Tara Brock and Jack Cornfield, and I'm personally working with some really great mentors. I'm working with Jocelyn Hitter, and I'm working with Leslie Booker. Booker was recently on the 10% Happier podcast, and she did a whole anxiety series, of all things, with Dan Harris on the 10% Happier app, if you're familiar with any of that. Anyway, I'm getting a chance to work with both of them personally. I'm studying big time over in the meditation world, and I'm really excited to be bringing a brand new meditation course your way this fall. And I'm going to be doing more. I have lots of goodies coming your way, but I just wanted to let you know to keep your eyes peeled for info on the collective, if that's interesting to you, and for more on meditation soon, because that will be coming too. Sound good? All right, let's get into today's episode. So you may have seen the title to this week's podcast and gone, huh, what are empty thoughts? So empty thoughts. One family of empty thoughts are thoughts that come across the ticker tape of your mind that don't mean anything. They just have no value. They're thoughts you don't hook into and act upon. These are thoughts that just like float across your mind, like clouds float across the sky, and then they just dissipate into nothingness. So the reason it's important to recognize this flavor of empty thoughts is to remind all of us thoughts are real, but they are not necessarily true. So here's what I mean. Thoughts are real in the sense that you can really think thoughts, right? I can really think the thought, I'm going to the moon. 
I can really think the thought, I am the Queen of England. <laughs> I can really think the thought, I'm going to be Simone Biles when I grow up. Those are all real thoughts, right? Because I can think them. Those are real sentences that are really going through my mind. Real thoughts. But just because I think them doesn't make them true. None of those thoughts are remotely true, obviously, right? Those thoughts are pretty ridiculous, actually. They're just sentences in my mind. So now let's make this less ridiculous, although that was kind of fun just to illustrate the point, of course, but let's make this less ridiculous and talk about how empty thoughts more likely show up in your everyday life. So one kind of empty thought is, I can't handle this. I don't know how many clients I've talked to over the years that have shown up with some form of that thought. I just can't handle this. And yet they're handling it. They're handling work. They're handling the kids, managing the household. They're getting through each and every day, 100% of the time. I can't handle this is an empty thought every time. It's real in that many of us think that. Right? Maybe you have that thought when you feel anxious or stressed or overwhelmed. And you're like, oh, I just can't handle this. Maybe you have that thought when one of the kids is losing it. I cannot handle this. Maybe you have that thought when your boss is being a jerk. You're like, oh, I can't handle this. But guess what? You do. You do handle it. You do and you have and you will. It's a real thought, but it's not true. All right, another classic empty thought in this family is, I don't know. This is a fun one. How many times a week, maybe how many times a day, do we utter the words, I don't know? And yet, so often, we find a way. <laughs> we figure it out. Or my favorite is that we do know, but we don't want to know that we know. It's like we try and trick ourselves into confusion because we don't like what we know. So we say, huh, I don't know. I don't know is an empty thought. Almost across the board, we keep moving forward. We keep getting through the day. We keep making decisions and taking actions and going and doing all the things. We do know. It doesn't always look like we think it will, right? The universe doesn't deliver people or situations with like a post-it note that just states clearly, this means X. Or choose A, not B. It's not all neat and tidy and obvious, but we do know. We figure it out. We get from not knowing to knowing pretty much every single time. It's amazing. So you can think you don't know, but it's an empty thought because most of the time you figure it out. You Google it, you ask for help, you go back to the drawing board, maybe you try a few things that don't work and you learn and you keep trying and then you know, right? So you see how these empty thoughts show up, right? They're tricky because they seem like we're just reporting what we see. I can't handle this. I don't know. A few others that I can think of that are similar to this that are kind of in the same family of empty thoughts are things like, I'm not ready. I'm not sure. I don't like it. These are all just empty thoughts that either create some noise and slow things down, or they're just cover-ups for something that's more true, that's raw, and vulnerable, and that's probably just hiding underneath. Like, think of, I can't handle this, is usually code for, I don't want to handle this, right? I can't handle the work presentation or the toddler screaming. Sure you can, you don't want to, <laughs> but you can, right? I don't know is usually code for, I'm gonna have to go to work and figure this out, and I may fail and have to try again and again to get where I want to go, right? I'm not ready 
and I'm not sure, when we get honest, those thoughts are really closer to, I'm scared. Just try it out for yourself. See what you find. It's just interesting to see that empty thoughts are clever distractions. They're usually a cover-up so that we don't have to be honest and vulnerable. With others, sure, but also with ourselves. All right, so that's one family of empty thoughts. I also want to talk about empty thoughts from another angle, and that is the thoughts that we intellectually know or understand, but thoughts that stay locked in our minds. So this family of empty thoughts are thoughts that we don't live into, meaning we don't breathe life into them by acting on them. They ping pong around in our heads, but they never see the light of day. So in this case, I'm talking about thoughts like, I want to meditate regularly, or I want to get closer to my partner, or I know I don't have to feel this anxious all the time. Those are thoughts that you may think and you may even really agree with. You may, in your mind, imagine yourself with a regular meditation practice or getting closer and more intimate with your partner. Maybe you imagine yourself handling anxiety with more ease and more freedom and just feeling better in your life. You may see it in your mind's eye. But if you've ever had a thought and had the real sense that this thing, this thought, is 100% possible, but you felt like you just could not connect the dots and make that thought your reality, then you've had an empty thought. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. So when you think it, and you may even have that follow-up thought, something like, I really believe I can do this. But the reality is, you're not meditating regularly. Right? You and your partner are like two ships passing in the day and the night. You don't have meaningful conversation. Maybe you aren't having sex all that often. Or maybe you're still racked with anxiety more often than you'd like. So what gives? What's up with these empty thoughts? How do these thoughts become reality? This is where what we in the coaching world call thought work comes in. This is where thought work has to get embodied. So quick tangent here. One of the things that I love the most about yoga is that if nothing else, you're using your breath and your body. It's an invitation to get into your body. I know yoga in our culture has kind of gotten this reputation for being like sexy poses on the beach and turning yourself into a pretzel or doing handstands or whatever. But the basics of what we think of as yoga, the asana part of the practice or the postures, right? The poses that you see, which is really only one small part of what yoga actually is. But that part, it's one of the best invitations to get into your body. So many of us live from the neck up. We are locked inside our heads and we're thinking all day, every day about every little thing. One of the most empowering things you can do for yourself is to regularly get out of your head and get into your body to breathe and to move. I tell you what, for my money, it just doesn't get any better than yoga for that. But okay, yoga rant over. This is the key here is embodiment. Embodiment is where your thoughts have life. So when you start feeling the emotions those thoughts generate, it's when you take action from there, you begin to live those thoughts. To find a place, maybe, where you have empty thoughts that you aren't living into, look for places where you say things like, well, someday, right? Or, that sure would be nice. Or, I wish I could. I mean, I'd really love to. Those are hints. Those are red flags that something is there, but that it's not alive for you. It's like a dormant dream. It's just a barren idea. Someday, it's kind of like saying, that isn't going to (laughs) happen. 
right? That sure would be nice. We might as well just say, that's not for me. You see what I mean? Those are hints that you're having an empty thought because unless you choose otherwise, it's going to stay empty. It's going to stay in your mind as this quiet little hint of a thing. Instead of ever coming out into the world through your emotions and your actions. And if it's something you really want for yourself, you will have to embody it. That's required. It has to come to life through your emotions and actions. It cannot stay empty, meaning it cannot stay locked in your head if it's going to become your reality. So whatever you find, whatever you recognize as an empty thought, first get honest with yourself and ask, is this something I'm really committed to? Like committed. Would I be willing to do hard things to create this reality for myself? Would I be willing to inconvenience myself to bring this into my life? Would I be willing to consistently show up and fail and try again and get uncomfortable? Would I be willing to do all of that to make this happen? Because if no, that's okay. It's just good to know. Saying I'm not willing to do what it would take to get closer to my partner is a far cry from... I wish our relationship felt more intimate and connected. That sure would be nice. Right? Being honest about it is really important. But assuming you are willing, assuming you're ready and you're completely committed, then you have to look at that thought and ask yourself, what can I do to breathe life into this desire? What do I need to do to embody this thought? If this thought were going to leap out of my head and into my body and into my life, what would that look like? And then go do that. It won't be easy. I can almost promise you this because if it were easy, you'd already have done it. (laughs) We'd be talking about something else, something different, something more difficult. So I'm pretty sure it won't be easy. But so what? Hard things are okay, it's fine. Figure out how to embody it and you'll figure out how to make that thought live. So, empty thoughts. Thoughts are real, but they're not necessarily true. It's the first part of what we talked about, right? Find empty thoughts that you think, maybe thoughts you think regularly, but thoughts you don't need to focus any time or energy on. Thoughts like, I can't handle this. I don't know. I'm not ready. Those are just silly, noisy thoughts that are real. You can really think them, but they're not true. So don't fall for them. And then look for empty thoughts that stay locked in your head because you're not following through and embodying them. Thoughts that seem like a nice to have or a someday, those kinds of things, Hone in on those. See if there's something you really want or really want to create. And if they are, get curious about how you can embody them. They're not going to appear in your life as a goal or accomplishment by accident. They're going to require your attention and effort and energy to become your reality. Yeah? All right, so that's empty thoughts. I hope that's a helpful one for you. Next week, I'm going to be talking about decision anxiety. I had a great listener question, just like I was talking about at the top of the show. I had an awesome listener question come through, and I'm going to answer that. And I'm going to explore making decisions together with you next week. So I will see you at the same time, same place for that. And until then, everyone, please, let's all take care of each other. Mask up. Get vaccinated if you can, right? Let's take care of each other. Take care of yourself. All right? Bye for now. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. 
The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject.